good evening. Uh, my name is Gilbert Ashkar. I'm uh, the convener of uh, the series of events, the Globalization Lectures, uh, for the Department of Development Studies here at SOAS. And it's our great privilege, all of us at SOAS here, to welcome uh, this evening one of the most uh, prestigious uh, public intellectual of our time. Uh, and with a prestige enhanced by the fact that she's a woman from the Middle East, a part of the world which is demonstrating now for any anybody who had any doubt about that, that, that democracy and human rights are indeed parts of its cultural values. So uh, I will just ask you please to uh, put off your, your mobile phones and also to refrain from moving during the, the event. It will take, uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, 45 minutes uh, intervention, a presentation by uh, Dr. Ebadi, and then we'll have 30 minutes uh, for Q&A, that is 20 minutes questions, and then 10 minutes reply by Dr. Ebadi, and that will be it. So please, uh, uh, I mean, remain seated until the end, uh, the end of the event. Now, it is such a, a exceptional circumstance that uh, uh, it needed exceptional measures and uh, therefore uh, uh, the director of, of SOAS, uh, Paul Webley, will, will, uh, will uh, say a few words of welcome and uh, we have the great pleasure of having the president of SOAS, Baroness Elena Kennedy, uh, introducing our distinguished guest. Thank you very much. I think I'm going to skip my uh, prepared talk. I just want to begin by apologising not to all of you, since you are all here uh, and have managed to get a place, but to all of those who I hope and I'm assured are in Room 116 listening to this as a streaming. So I hope they're all there. Uh, and if you tell anyone else also, we will have this up on the SOAS website. I must apologise. It's a tribute uh, to the, this evening's speaker that uh, we ha must have had more than double, probably even more than that, the number of people wanting to come and listen this evening. This is SOAS's largest venue, uh, and it just was not big enough. We clearly should have gone and stormed our neighbours, the Institute of Education, who have a much bigger lecture hall, uh, and that's what we will remember to do next time you come. So, it's good to see such a large group of uh, students, staff, alumni, large number of members of the general public. It's always good to welcome people to SOAS. Uh, many of you I recognise, I know there's a lots of students here, I know there's a lots of uh, alumni. I just want to say one thing to those who've not been to SOAS before. You can see me skipping lots of things I was going to say. Uh, but what I wanted to say to those of you who've not been here before is, SOAS sometimes, as the students will tell you, is a bit disorganised. I've been working for many years. <laughs> I've been working for many years, you might not think it, but I've been work for working for many years to uh, stop that being the case. But what we do offer at SAS is wonderful events, wonderful speakers, wonderful teachers. So if this is your first time to SAS, please do not be put off by the fact that we are starting ooh, 20 minutes or more late and that it took you a long time to get in because we have, I think, the best set of events of any place uh, in London. I'm biased, of course, but if you look at the lectures, the panel discussions, what we have in the Brunei at the moment, those of you, again, who are visitors, you might love the exhibition we have at the moment on the Bridge of Knowledge, looking at the links between the Islamic world and the West, is tremendous. So if this is your first visit, please don't let it be your last. Please look at our website and come back. I said we have the best set of events because we're special, and this evening's event is particularly special. Dr. Abadi will be introduced by Baroness Helena Kennedy, the President of SOAS. The question and answer session, as Gilbert has said, will be moderated by him. But I just want to say a few words about Baroness Kennedy before I hand over to her. Baroness Kennedy is a lawyer, like Dr. Abadi. She spent her professional life giving voice to those who have least power within the system, championing civil liberties, promoting human rights. She's a very active barrister. You'll have seen she's been involved in a large number of prominent cases. She's a brilliant barrister. But for me, it's not her work as a barrister, outstanding as that is, but the combination of her desire, her exceptional skills as an advocate, with her desire to bring about change and social reform that make her so special. That desire 
to bring about change, to make a difference, is something she shares with many of our students. She's taken that into many fields of activities. She's written two books that have had a major impact relevant to this evening. Eve was framed, Women and British Justice. I strongly recommend it to you. She chaired Charter 88, the British Council. She's been very active in promoting participation in higher education. And on top of all of that, in her spare time, she's a member of the House of Lords, where she often contributes on issues relating to human rights, civil liberties, social justice, and culture. So I can't think of anybody more appropriate to introduce tonight's speaker than our president, Helena Kennedy. Over to you, Helena. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you what an honor this is. Everyone has heroes, and Shirin Abadi is one of mine. She is one of the world's great jurists. She is one of the world's great champions of human rights, and as Gilbert said, one of the great public intellectuals of our times. I have the great good fortune of being the president of SOAS, and I've done that now for, I think, 10 years. It has been a privilege because SOAS is where the world meets. It's a, a wonderful university. It's a, a place, probably the, the most diverse uh, college, I think, in the world, College of Higher Education. We have students from all over the world. And here, the great conversation of mankind takes place. Sometimes voices are raised in that conversation but it's always challenging, interesting, it's always an exciting place to be. But tonight is special, even in all the events that we have, it's special, because the woman who sits before you is a truly special woman. This is a woman who qualified as a judge, studied in the 60s, became a lawyer, and went on to judicial appointment, sat as a judge in the courts in Iran. But following the revolution in 1979, I'm afraid conservative clerics uh, insisted that Islam did not allow women to sit as judges. Of course, it's not quite the interpretation that Shirin Abadi would put on it. But she was demoted from her post, um, was really demoted to really a clerical position. After a great argument with other, other lawyers and uh, women judges, um, she was sort of translated upwards to be accepted as someone who had legal expertise. But it was only in 1993, after much battling, that she was able to practice as a lawyer and put all her commitment and passion to the service of perhaps uh, the most disadvantaged in her society. She's lectured also on law extensively She's played a key role in Iranian society. In 1997, she was very much involved in the election of the reformist president, uh, President Khatami. She has, over the years, represented dissidents and the family of murdered intellectuals, murdered by extremist hardliners. She has been the voice for women and children within uh, Iran. And she has paid the price incarceration, uh, interrogation. And she has argued, perhaps more effectively than anyone I know, for an interpre interpretation of Islam that is in harmony with equality and democracy. Not, she would say very strenuously, a religion that binds women. But it has been used selectively by some to cloister women and to take women out of public life. She believes that Iran will change, is in the process of changing, but will change from within. In 2003, Shirin Abadi, for all her precious work on human rights, on championing democracy and the rule of law, was given the Nobel Prize. It was a day when my heart sang and the sang of me, uh, hearts of many around the world sang because it was recognition of someone with such courage, such strength of character, and such commitment that we could only marvel that she even existed. So tonight it is our pleasure and our honor that we have her in our midst. 
I've had the opportunity of meeting Sharon twice in the, in the past, once when I was chairing the British Council and she came to, uh, to London, I think about 2004. I then met her again only about a year, I think, or two ago, when we uh, had an exhibition at the British Museum um, in which uh, an exchange was made and uh, the great artifacts from Tehran came to be um, shown in an exhibition called Shah Abbas at the, the British Museum. And Sharon came at that time. And I was thrilled because she had just brought out her autobiography in which she, with great honesty, described the life that she'd had um, and some of the battles that she'd had to uh, uh, fight. But she tells that story with honesty and humility and sometimes um, is harder on herself than she needs to be. Her new book is going to be published in April, a book which is a story, really, of, uh, of suffering and life, um, which perhaps tells uh, the story of modern Iran better than anything. And uh, I hope that you will all buy that book and champion her accounts, because no one tells the story better than she. And so it is my great pleasure tonight uh, to say that we have in our midst a woman who can only be described as a heroine, Shirin Abadi. ریاست محترم سواس، اساتید ارجمند، خانم ها و آقایان. Honorable Chancellor of SOAS, uh, Honorable Lecturers and Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. بسیار خوشحالم که توانستم امشب اینجا با شما صحبت بکنم. از همه شما که اینجا آمدید سپاس گذارم. I'm very happy to be able to come and speak to you here tonight, and I'm very grateful to all of you for having come here. امروز میخوام یک نگاهی بسیار کوتاه و گذرا داشته باشیم به علل بحران در خاور میانه و نقش زنان در کاهش این بحران ها. This evening, we'd like to, I'd like to have a brief glance, a brief glance at the reasons for the current crisis in the Middle East. And the role the women can play to reduce that crisis. متاسفانه سال هاست که خبر میانه دستخوش آشوب و هر جمرج سال هاست که مردم بیگناه اون در آتش جنگ می سوزن و در بیگوله های باقی مانده از جنگ و ترور مردم این منطقه سوال می کنند چه دست هایی این سرنوشت رو برای اونها رقم زده For some time now the Middle East has been a scene of chaos it has been a scene of disorder and many uh, innocent people have been victims of wars and acts of terrors and among the debris of the war they have been asking themselves who has been responsible for all of this علل تنش و بحران در این منطقه از جهان رو ما میتونیم در سه عامل علامت گذاری کنیم. The reasons for the tension and the crisis in the region I could divide into three factors. اول اختلاف بین فلسطین و اسرائیل. The first is the dispute between Palestine and Israel. دوم دخالت کشورهای بیگانه در این منطقه از جهان از جمله حمله نظامی به عراق Secondly is the intervention of outside countries in this region of the world including the military attack that was waged against Iraq و مهمترین عامل کمبود دموکراسی و نقص گسترده حقوق بشر در این منطقه از دنیا. And the third and the most important factor is the lack of democracy and human the 
violation, widespread violation of human rights in the region. تا زمانی که فلسطین و اسرائیل با هم آشی نکنن مسلما این منطقه از دنیا روی آرامش به خودش نمیگیره until the day palestine and israel reach a peace deal there is no doubt that will be no order in this region of the world سالها قبل قرارداد صلحی در اسرو منعقد شد ولی کن روی کاغذ باقی مونده و رادیکال ها از هر دو طرف حاضر نیستن اجراش کنند Um, some years ago, there was the Oslo peace agreement, but sadly, that has just remained a document on a piece of paper, and uh, the radical extremists from both sides of the equation have not made it possible for this document to be realized. But John, her amal khashni va konish khashin tadi ro be dumbal dare. در نتیجه ما شاهد وقایعی مثل محاصره غزه و حمله به کشتی به خاربار به کشتی حامل خاربار و وقایعی که به دنبال اون اتفاق افتاده هستیم. Sadly because every violent action is followed by an even more violent reaction we have witnessed the siege of Gaza and the attack on the flotilla which was carrying food to the Palestinians. اختلاف بین فلسطین و اسرائیل منشه درگیری های دیگری هم شده از جمله اختلاف بین دو گروه فلسطینی The Israeli Palestinian conflict has been a source of other conflicts as well such as the dispute among the Palestinian groups و مجموعه این حوادث و سوء استفاده ای که برخی از دولت ها از این اختلافات می کنند باعث شده که یکی از علل بحران در منطقه همین مسئله باشه. And the way this uh, crisis and this dispute has been exploited by the government that has been the reason that this has remained one of the crises in this region. و ما نقش زنان در این وسط چیه؟ And now what role can women play in this? زنان فلسطینی و اسرائیلی با ادامه جنگ مخالفن. Women from both Palestine and Israel are opposed to the continuation of war. مادرانی که فرزندانشون رو چه اسرائیلی چه فلسطینی در این جنگ از دست دادن کمیته مادران صلح رو تشکیل دادن. Mothers on both sides from Israel and Palestine who have lost children in this conflict have formed a committee called the Committee of Mothers for Peace. اینا به همکاری مستمر با همدیگه پرداختند و راههای مختلف ارتباط بین دو جامعه مسلمان و یهودی رو بررسی میکنند. They have been continuing to work together and looking at ways of resolving disputes between Jewish and Muslim communities. In ha az hukum az rahbaran khodeshun sual mikonan ta kay bayasti daghdare jawanashun bashan. They're asking their leaders for how long should they continue to mourn their children. Mutasifane dar muzakirat sol va jalasati kay be be in manzur tashkil mishe صدای کمیته مادران صلح به هیچ وجه شنیده نمیشه. But sadly in these peace negotiations and any talks regarding peace voices of these mothers for peace from both sides are not heard or represented. هر چند وقت یک بار سیاستمداری سیاستمدارانی جنگ طلب از هر دو سو به مذاکره می نشینند. و بعد هم بدون نتیجه مذاکره تموم میشه. Every once in a while there are warmongering politicians from both sides who sit around the negotiation table and it's usually to no avail. و من بارها اعلام کردم مذاکرات صلح بدون مشارکت زنان فایده ای نداره و به نتیجه نمیرسه. And I have said that so many times that peace negotiations without the participation of women would not 
produce any fruit and it will be without any results. زنان جامعه ممکنه پست سیاسی نداشته باشن ولی کن صدای جامعه مدنی هستند باید صدای اونها رو شنید yes women in society may not have political positions but they are the voices of the civil society and they're very important بنابراین یکی از علل شکست مذاکرات صلح این است که نهادهای فمینیستی رو در این مذاکرات دخالت نمیدن Therefore one of the reasons these peace talks always collapse is because they exclude feminist movements from such talks. زنان نیمی از افراد هر اجتماعی هستند و نادیده گرفتن اونها به منزله نادیده گرفتن نیمی از پتانسیل جامعه است. Women constitute half of the world's population and neglecting that half means neglecting half the potential of the, the whole world. و یکی از علل شکست مذاکرات این است که نیمی از جامعه رو فراموش کردن. علت دیگر بحران های این منطقه این است که به علت ثروت سرشاری که در اینجا وجود داره همواره مورد طمع سایر کشورها قرار گرفته. Another reason for the existence of crisis in the Middle East region is because it, is a, it has many rich resources. And as a result, it, uh, it's the avaricious countries that are constantly looking at the resources. And we are the leaders of other governments in this area, which can be used to the government of the Arab. And we are constantly witnessing the interventions of other countries in this region. And uh, as an instance, I can highlight the military attack that was waged against Iraq. در ابتدا عنوان می شد که برای پیش برد دموکراسی بر آق حمله کردن. ولی کن دیدیم که حمله نظامی بر آق نه تنها دموکراسی رو برای اونجا پیش نایی ورد بلکه بنیادگرایی اسلامی رو هم ایجاد کرد و روز به روز سقیت می کنه. At first, they said that it was because they wanted to advance democracy in the region in the region but not only we did not witness democracy we saw the rise of islamic fundamentalism which is growing by the day و می دونیم که بنیاد گرایی اسلامی در درجه اول حقوق زن رو مورد حمله قرار میده and we all know that islamic fundamentalism above all in the first instance targets women's rights. زنان عراقی ضمن تلاش برای تساوی حقوق کمیته‌هایی درست کردند که در اون حرف آموزی و ایجاد اشتغال برای زنان دیگر می‌کنند. The women in Iraq in addition to striving for equal rights They've set up committees, and in these committees, they are training people, and they're trying to create work opportunities. Sanan Arab, as one side, with Bunyad Garay Islami, mubarazi mi konan, as soye digar, baraye istiqrar hakimiyat milli be manay waqi dar keshvareshu. The Iraqi women, on the one hand, are struggling against Islamic fundamentalism, and on the other, they're doing the, at their utmost to establish national sovereignty in its real sense. و ما دخالت کشورهای بیگانه در این منطقه در حقیقت ناشی از عامل سوم بحران یعنی نبود دموکراسی در منطقه است. The intervention of outside forces in the region stems from the third factor I mentioned earlier, which is the lack of democracy in the region. وقتی که یک در یک کشور مردم حاکم بر سرنوشت خودشون باشند، اجازه نمیدن بیگانگان دخالت کنند. 
when in a country the people determine their own fate, they would not allow foreigners and outsiders to intervene in their country. For one example, در عربستان سعودی در سال 2010 60 میلیارد دلار اسلحه خرید. For instance, in Saudi Arabia in 2010 they spent 60 billion dollars on purchasing weapons. صرف این همه پول برای خرید اسلحه در حالتی که مردم برای رفاهشون احتیاج به پول دارن چیزی جز گسترش استبداد نیست. Spending all this money to purchase arms when the people do not have proper welfare system is nothing but authoritarianism. متاسفانه کشورهای خاورمیانه به علت تاریخی از دموکراسی پیشرفت محرومند. Sadly countries in the Middle East for historical reasons have been deprived of democracy. اکثر این دولت ها واقعا منتخب مردمشون نیستن. در ظاهر یک انتخاباتی صورت میگیره ولی که واقعا انتخابات به معنای واقعی نیست و به همین دلیله که ما میبینیم مثلا در سوریه ریاست جمهوری موروسی میشه و بعد از حافظ اسد پسرش بشار اسد میشه رئیس جمهور. On the surface, these elections appear to be democratic, but in the real, uh, in the, it is true sense, they are not democratic. I give you an instance. In Syria, for example, uh, there is now the presidential election is such that it has become hereditary. Hafez Assad was succeeded by his son Bashar Assad. یا مثلا در عربستان سعودی یا در امارات متحده عربی پارلمان به معنای واقعی وجود نداره. یه مجمعی که افرادش توسط پادشاه تعیین میشن هستن که در مواردی که پادشاه ضروری بداند بهش مشورت میدن. Or oh, for example in Saudi Arabia and the United uh, Arab Emirates there are no elected parliaments and the parliament, members of parliament are appointed by, by the king. بقیه کشورها هم وضعیت بهتری ندارن. مثل اردن، کویت، یمن، بحرین همه همین در حد پایینی از دموکراسی هستن. The situation is not any better in some other countries such as Jordan, Kuwait, Yemen and Bahrain and they also suffer from the lack of democracy. تنها استثنا در این میان ترکیه است که به نسبت بقیه کشورها دموکراسیش پیشرفته تره. The only exception here is Turkey which in relation to other countries enjoys better level of democracy. در بعضی از کشورها مثل ایران ادعا میشه که به طور مرتب هر دو سال یک بار انتخابات انجام میشه. In countries such as Iran they claim that they have elections regularly every two years. و دولت ایران برگزاری این همه انتخابات رو نشانه دموکرات بودن خودش میدونه. And the Iranian government claims that having all these elections demonstrates that it's a democracy. اما در کلیه انتخاباتی که در ایران صورت میگیره صلاحیت کاندیداها بایستی قبلا به تایید شورای نگهبان برسه بعد مردم به اونها رأی بدن. But in all the elections that takes place in Iran, the competency of every candidate must first be endorsed by an oversight council called the Guardian Council before the people are allowed to vote for them. And any of these candidates who have the slightest criticism of the government are deemed incompetent by the Guardian Council. شورای نگهبان مراقب از دوازده نفره که شش نفرش مستقیمن و شش نفر دیگر به صورت غیر مستقیم از طرف رهبر تعیین میشن. The Guardian Council is comprised of 12 members. Six of them are directly appointed um, and by, by the leader and six of them are, um, are also appointed. در انتخابات ریاست جمهوری 
که در جور 2009 صورت گرفت بیش از 300 نفر کاندید بودن اما شورای نگهبان صلاحیت چهار نفر رو فقط تایید کرد بقیه رو بدون اینکه علتی بگه رد صلاحیت کرد In the June 2009 elections 300 candidates had put their names forward but the Guardian Council only endorsed the candidacy of four of them and it rejected the rest که از اون چهار نفر یکیش قبلا رئیس جمهور بود سه تای دیگه هم از افرادی بودن که داخل در حکومت و پست‌های مهمی داشتن. And of the four, one of them was previously a um, prime minister and the other three had also had important posts in the country. و بعد از اینکه انتخابات برگزار شد، دیدیم که چه اتفاقاتی افتاد که حالا مفصلا بعدا راجع بهش صحبت می‌کنیم. And we've all seen what happened after the elections, which I will, we can speak about it in detail later on. بنابراین مهمترین علت بحران و تنش در منطقه کمبود دموکراسی و نقض مستمر حقوق بشره. Therefore, the most important factor in uh, lack of democracy in the region is uh, The, and for the tension and the crisis in the region is the lack of democracy sorry فرهنگ پدر سالار در این منطقه ریشه بسیار عمیقی داره و زنان در وضعیت تبعیض‌آمیزی به سر می‌برن there has been a patriarchal culture in this region for many many years and women suffer from discrimination اختلاف طبقاتی زیاد اکثریت مردم از رفاه محرومند. There is a great gap between different classes in society and many people are deprived of uh, their rights. در خاورمیانه آزادی بیان بسیار محدود و مخالفین به شدت سرکوب میشن. In the whole of the Middle East, uh, the freedom of expression is incredibly limited and people are deprived of many rights. اما تا کی می شود بازور سرنیزه بر مردم حکومت کرد. But for how long did they rule over the people by military force and coercion? و می‌بینید که کشورهای خاورمیانه دونه به دونه دارن مردم اعتراض می‌کنن و حقوق انسانی و حق خودشون رو طلب می‌کنن. And you can see that in the Middle East one by one these countries are asking for their rights they're opposing the regime and they want their human rights and democracy دوران دیکتاتورها به سر آمده برای اینکه تکنولوژی باعث شده که مردم به همدیگه نزدیکتر بشن و آگاهیشون بیشتر بشه The age of dictatorship is over because thanks to technology people have become closer to each other and awareness has been raised among them دیدید که در تونس مردم چقدر زود تونستند بن علی رو فراری بدن You can see how quickly in Tunisia people managed to get uh, to, to um, get rid of Ben Ali در مصر حسنی مبارک هم رفته نیست And the same fate awaits Hosni Mubarak in Egypt من شک ندارم I'm, I have I have doubt. I have no doubts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Maybe I, 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 I'm so sorry. I missed the no. I have no doubts. در اردن و در بحرین هم شروع شده. The same has started in Jordan and in Bahrain. در ایران که از سالها قبل شروع شده بود. And this started in Iran many years ago. و هر بار سعی کردند که مردم رو ساکت کنند. And every time they tried to suppress the voices of the people. آخرین اون در جون 2000 و وقایعی بود که اتفاق افتاد. And the last of that was in June 2009 and the consequent events, subsequent events. بعد از اعلام نتایج انتخابات مردم در حرکت چند میلیونی به خیابان آمدند و بسیار مسالمت آمیز خواست خودشون رو بیان کردند. After the June 2009 elections, 
millions of people took to the streets and in a peaceful way, they raised their demands. But they responded to the people with bullets and with imprisonment. در روی فیلم هایی که ب... توی یوتیوب هم میبینید پلیس توی خیابون با ماشین از روی مردم رد میشه you can see in youtube footage that the police actually runs over the protesters on the street و رئیس پلیس میاد ادعا میکنه که ماشین پلیس رو دزدیده بوده but then you get the head of the police force who comes and claims that It was a stolen police car that had done so. در فیلم ها نشون داده شده که از بالای یک ساختمان دولتی متعلق به بسیج به مردم بی پناه در خیابان تیراندازی کردن تعدادی رو کشتن. You've seen in films how from the top of a government building the Basij fired at the people, at the crowds and killed some. و دولت ادعا کرد که مردم رفته بودن بالای ساختمون ما و از اونجا خودشون به خودشون تیر می زدن. Again, the government claimed that it was the people themselves who'd gone on top of that building and were shooting other people. تعداد زیادی از ژورنالیست‌ها رو دستگیر کردن برای اینکه اخبار ایران رو به بیرون منتقل نکنن. They arrested many journalists because they wanted to prevent them from uh, transferring the news in Iran to outside the country. To had dige tebqe guzarish sazman guzarishkaran bedun marz dar sal 2009 Iran bishtarin ta'dad journalist webnegar va nevisande ro dar zindan dar dunya dasht va Iran tabdil shod be zindan bozorg nevisandegan. To such an extent that a report that was published by Reporters Without Frontiers in 2009, uh, it said that Iran had the highest number of journalists, bloggers, and writers in prison, which made Iran the biggest prison in the whole of the Middle East. One of the problems faced by the Iranian people is the در اکنومیك سیچویشن طبق گزارش های بین المللی رشد اقتصادی در ایران در سال 2009 یک و شیش بوده که پایین ترین رشد رو در خاور میانه داشت یعنی ما حتی از افغانستان و از عراق هم در این زمینه پایین تر بودیم according to economic figures Uh, in 2009, the economic growth in Iran was 1.6, which means that Iran's economic growth was even lower than Afghanistan and Iraq in the region. Despite the intense violence and harsh violence by the government, The people have not given up, and they continue to protest. دولت ادام ها رو زیاد کرده برای اینکه مردم رو بترسونه. To frighten the people, the government has increased the executions. از از اول جانویه تا به امروز به طور متوسط هر روز دو نفر آدم در ایران ادام شدند. Since the beginning of January this year, on average, at least two people have been executed by the regime a day. Some of them were political prisoners. Nevertheless, the voices of people become louder and louder every day, and their protests intensify. وقتی که مردم مصر اعتراض کردن به دیکتاتور دولت ایران پیام داد که صدای مردم رو بشنوید و با اونها خشونت نکنید When the people of Egypt protested against the dictator the Iranian government it sent a message it said to the Egyptian government 
please listen to the voice of your people. Please do not exercise violence. در بعضی از سایت ها من خوندم که فردا چارده بهمن ساعت سه بعد از ظهر جوان ها میخوان برن تو هر شریک هستن تو میدان و اعتراض بکنن من نمیدونم میرن یا نه این خبر واقعیه یا نه ولی کن من هم متقابلا از دولت ایران میخواهم که اگر مردم رفتن به خیابان شما حق ندارید با اونها خشونت کنید اون نصیحتی که به I have read in some website that tomorrow, 3rd of February, some Iranian people intend to go and stage protests. I'm not sure if that is going to happen, but if it does, my message to the Iranian people is do not exercise any violence against these people. At least try and abide by the message you gave to the Egyptian government. دولت ایران به طور دائم صحبت می کند که بایستی انتخابات آزاد در عراق و در افغانستان صورت بگیره و ما می خواهیم خواهش بکنیم که لطفا همین توصیه رو خودتون عمل کنید The Iranian government is constantly saying that there must be free elections in Iraq and Afghanistan so we would like to kindly request the Iranian government to do likewise اما نقش زنان در کاهش این بحران ها چیست؟ Now what is the role of women in alleviating such crises? حقوق زن و و دموکراسی دو کفه یک ترازو هستند. The rights of women and democracy are two scales of a balance. نمیشه ادعای دموکرات بودن داشت و نیمی از مردم اجتماع رو از حقوق انسانی خودشون محروم کرد. You cannot claim to be democratic and deprive half the society's population from their human rights. و با این ترتیب زنانی که برای تساوی حقوق مبارزه می کنند پیشگامان دموکراسی هستند. And so the women who are striving to realize equal rights are the forerunners of democracy. جنبش فمینیستی در ایران قوی ترین جنبشی است که در خاور میانه وجود داره. The feminist movement in Iran is the strongest feminist movement in the whole of the Middle East. و قدیمی ترینش. And the oldest. و تقریبا 100 سال شروع شده با شروع مشروطیت. And it began about a century ago when there was the constitutional revolution. در سایر کشورهای خاورمیانه هم نظیر این جنبش دیده میشه اما گفتم در ایران قوی تره بنا به دلایل تاریخی. There is there are feminist movements in other Middle Eastern countries as well but as I said it is stronger in Iran for several reasons. اولین انقلاب قرن بیس، اولین انقلاب دموکراتیک قرن بیستم رو در خاورمیانه ایران کرد که انقلاب مشروطیت بود. The first democratic movement in the 20th century uh, was in a, a democratic revolution in the 20th century took place in Iran and it was the constitutional revolution. مردم ایران زمانی حرف از دموکراسی زدند که تزارها در روس بودند و ترکان عثمانی در غرب کشور. The people of Iran spoke of democracy the first time when the czars were ruling over the former Soviet Union and the Ottoman Turks were ruling over the West. و زمانی که در ایران صحبت از دموکراسی و حکومت قانون میشد بسیاری از کشورهای خاورمیانه اصلا وجود نداشتند. When in Iran they first talked of democracy and a legal um, government sorry the rest of the world they hadn't even heard of democracy. به همین دلیل که جنبش فمینیستی در ایران ریشه های عمیقی داره و مورد 
الگوبرداری سایر کشورهای منطقه هم قرار گرفته. That is why the democratic movement in Iran has very deep roots and it is being used as a role model by many other countries. و بین زنان ایران و سایر زنان منطقه همکاری نزدیک و مستمر است. And there is very close cooperation between Iranian women and women in the rest of the region. در زمینه های مختلف and in various spheres. آموزشی مسائل بهداشتی ایجاد حرفه در تمامی این زمینه ها ایرانیا با زنان خاورمیانه همکاری مستمر و مشترک دارند. Iranian women have very close cooperation in various spheres with the women in the Middle East, such as education, health care, and job creation. علت قوت جنبش برابری خواهانه در ایران علاوه بر علت علت تاریخی که بیان کردم مسئله دیگری هم هست. The reason for the strength of the um, democratic move, equality movement in Iran, in addition to the historical reason that I mentioned, has also another reason. Iran, country with women in Farhiqt, is about 65% of our children. Iran is a country with many highly educated women. Over 65% of our university students are female. بسیاری از زن از اساتید دانشگاه‌های ما زنان. Many of our university lecturers are women. حتی در مشاغل بالای اداری هم حضور دارند. Women have a very prominent presence in even senior administrative positions. اما علیرغم وضعیت بالای فرهنگی زنان در ایران بعد از انقلاب قوانین تبعیض‌آمیزی تصویب شد که زنها اون قوانین رو نمیتونن تحمل کنن. But in spite of this high level of education among Iranian women after the revolution a series of discriminatory legislations were passed against women which Iranian women do not tolerate. Bonwan misal dar qanun nevishtan ke arzesh jan zan nimi az arzesh jan mande. For instance, in these laws they said that the value of a woman's life is half that of a man. Yani agar man va baradaram ba ham berim tu khiyabun va morad hamle kasi qarar begirim ya tasadduf automobil dashte bashim va yeksan ham zakhmi bashim خسارتی که به برادرم میدن دو برابر چیزی که به من تعلق میگیره. For instance, if my brother and I happen to be walking along the street and we are involved in an accident or we are hit by a car, the damage rewarded, the compensation rewarded to my brother is twice that rewarded to me. شهادت دو زن در دادگاه معادل با شهادت یک مرد. The testimony of two women in the court of law is tantamount to the testimony of one man. یک بعد میتونه چهار همسر بگیره بدون عذر موجه زنش رو طلاق بده اما طلاق گرفتن برای زن بسیار دشوار و گاه غیر ممکنه. A man can have four wives. The man can divorce his wives without giving any valid reasons. But it's very difficult and sometimes impossible for a woman to file and obtain a divorce. زنی که ازدواج کرده برای سفر کردن احتیاج به اجازه کتبی همسرش داره. A married woman who wishes to travel can only do so with a written permission from her husband. این قوانین با فرهنگ بالای زن ایرانی همخوانی نداره. Such legislation is not compatible with the high level of culture and education of Iranian women. I'm going to demonstrate this by giving you one example. من قبلا به شما گفتم که زنان در کلیه مشاغل بالای اداری هم هستند. از جمله یکی از وزرای 
آقای احمد نژاد یه خانمه وزیر بهداشت خانمه از I mentioned earlier women do occupy many high administrative posts and one of them is that of the health minister in Ahmadinejad's cabinet who is a woman حالا شما فکر کنید که این خانم وزیر میخواد بره سازمان بهداشت جهانی و در خصوص بهداشت مردم ایران صحبت بکنه این زن بایستی شب از شوهرش التماس بکنه و اجازه خروج از کشور بگیره Now imagine this lady minister is invited to address the World Health Organization. In order to leave the country and take part in that seminar and speak about the health situation in Iran, the night before she has to beg her husband to give her permission to leave the country. و معلوم نیست اگر که آقا لج بکنه و اجازه خروج از کشور نده چه اتفاقی میفته؟ آیا صندلی ایرانو قرار خالی بذارن؟ And God knows what's going to happen if the husband um, decides he doesn't want to give her permission to leave the country. And what happens then? Will Iran's seat on the World Health Organization be left vacant? As in misalها بسیار زیاده. فقط من این نتیجه رو میخوام بگیرم که قوانین ما متناسب جامعه ما نیست. There are many such instances. But I just want to show you that our legislation is not compatible with our society. و به همین دلیل که جنبش فمینیستی در ایران بسیار عمیق و گسترده است. Which is exactly why the feminist movement in Iran is so profound and widespread. این جنبش رهبر نداره اداره مرکزی و شعب هم نداره بلکه جایگاه اون در منزل هر ایرانی است که به برابری انسان ها اعتقاد داشته باشه This movement does not have a leader it doesn't have headquarters nor does it have any branches anywhere This movement is found in the home of every Iranian who believes in equality و همین مسئله باعث قوت این جنبشه برای اینکه اگر یک جنبشی متکی به یک یا چند رهبر بود اون رهبرا رو میگرفتن میکشتن یا زندان میکردن جنبش فروکش میکرد and that reason that is exactly the reason why this movement has become strong because a movement that relies on a or several leaders It's very possible that the government could arrest, imprison, or even kill those leaders, and the movement would collapse. سال هاست که زنان ایران به جرم برابری خواهی به زندان رفتن، ولی که زندان رفتن اونها نه تنها جنبش رو ضعیف نکرد، بلکه قوی ترم کرد. یک نفر رو که انداختن زندان، پنج نفر دیگه جاش آمدن. For many years, the Iranian women have been in prison on, the char- on charges of seeking equality. But that not only it has not weakened the movement, it has actually made it stronger. For every one woman who has been imprisoned, five other women take her place. Until the government was forced to be 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 forced to such an extent that In uh, some several cases, the government had to draw back and to reform and amend some of the laws in favor of equality of women. At جمله در سال 2004 قانون هزانت به نفع مادران ایران اصلاح شد. For instance, in 2004, they amended the custody law in favor of Iranian women. و به نظر من جنبش سبز که بعد از انتخابات جون 2009 ایجاد شد الگو برداری کرد از جنبش زنان ایران In my opinion the green movement that came into being after the 2009 elections had used the feminist movement as a role model این جنبش هم رهبر نداره گسترشش افقیه به همین دلیل که با وجود این همه کشتار و زندان انداختن صداها خاموش نشده. 
the Green Movement also doesn't have a leader as such. It is more of a horizontal movement, and that is why, despite all these killings, the voices of the people have not been quietened. آقای موسوی و آقای کروبی رو زندان نیانداختن یا نکشتن هم همین است برای اینکه دیدن فایده ای نداره جنبش متکی به این دو نفر نیست و راه خودش رو ادامه میده و دستگیری اینها فقط خشم مردم رو بیشتر میکنه The reason they have not imprisoned Mir Hossein Musavi or Mehdi Karoubi, it's because they know that it is of no use because this green movement is not dependent on these leaders, that it will continue and the people will continue to voice their anger. در هر اعتراض دموکراتیکی که مردم صورت دادن میبینیم که زنا در صف اول جمعه شد. We can see that women have been leading every democratic protest by the people in Iran. و در جنبش سبز هم از روی عکس ها و فیلم هایی که باقی مونده شما میدونید تعداد کثیر زنانی که در خیابونه. And you will see this in many films and pictures that have been taken from the protests that is the women many of whom are on the front lines. زنان ایران میدونند فقط در یک حکومت دموکرات که ممکنه به حقوقشون برسن. Iranian women are fully aware that it's only in a democratic country that they can achieve their rights. و دموکراسی با حرکت های مسالمت آمیز امکان پذیره نه با گلوله و عملیات چریکی. And Democracy can only be realized through peaceful activities, not with bullets and not with guerrilla movements. Zanon Iran, برای تلطیف فضای خشنی که حکومت ایجاد کرده بود، ابتکارهای جالبی رو به خرج دادن. In order to remove some of the harshness that the Iranian government had created, the Iranian women came up with some um, initiatives. از جمله می توان به تشکیل کمیته مادران ازادار اشاره کنم. One of them is the committee of mothers in mourning which was formed by these women. زنانی که فرزند از دست دادند و یا بچه های اون رو در زندان بودن دور هم در یکی از پارک ها روزهای شنبه جمع میشن و عکس بچه ها رو در آغوش میگیرن و در سکوت به هم نگاه میکنن Women who've either lost their children or their children are behind bars they congregate every Saturday in a park and they carry photographs of their children and they look at each other in silence. یکی دیگه از ابتکارات این است که چون هر نوع اعتراض خیابانی را دولت به شدت سرکوب میکنه به ابتکار زنها برای زندانیان سیاسی پشت دیوار جشن تولد میگیرن پشت دیوار زندان. Another initiative by these women is because of the intense crackdown on these street protests, Iranian women hold birthday parties for political prisoners behind the prison walls. And in, and in that way, they remind society what has happened and who is behind bars. زنان ایران بعد از شروع اعتراضات مردمی منطقه به زنان سایر کشورها از جمله تونس و مصر پیغام دادند. After the protests began in other parts of the region, Iranian women sent a message to these uh, women of those countries, such as women in Tunisia and in Egypt. 
زنان ایران گفتند مراقب حقوق خودتون باشید یعنی در گیرودار سیاست اجازه ندید حقوق زن پایمال بشه Iranian women's message was to these women amid all this make sure that your rights are not violated in all these political negotiations و خیال نکنید که با رفتن یک دیکتاتور کار تمام میشه and don't think that by getting rid of a dictator everything would be fine ممکنه یک دیکتاتور بره ولی کن کسی جاش بیاد که به نام دین یا به نام میهن یا به نام ایدولوژی بخواد نوع دیگری دیکتاتوری رو برقرار کنه Yes, a dictator may be ousted, but another dictator could easily take his place in the name of religion, in the name of nationalism, in the name of ideology, but, and, uh, but have another kind of dictatorship in place. در بین کشورهایی که الان مردم در حال اعتراض هستند، در تونس جامعه سکولار نسبتاً قویه. Among these countries in the region that are currently protesting in Tunisia, the secular society is relatively strong. و در اونجا زنها از همین الان شروع به اعلام خواستهای برابری خواهانی خودشون کردن و گفتن که اجازه نخواهند داد به نام دین یا ایدولوژی حقوق اونها رو از بین ببرند. From now, women in Tunisia have started to announce that they want equality and that they don't want the rights to be taken away in the name of religion or ideology. در اثر مقاومت همین زنها بود وقتی که رهبر اسلام گرایان تونسی ال ال قنوشی راشد در قنوشی به تونس برگشت گفت من نه خمینی هستم نه طالبان ولم کنیم بابا حقوق شما رو میدم. It was thanks to the resistance of these Tunisian women that when the leader of the Islamic Party of Tunisia, Rashid al Anouchi, sorry, returned to the country, the first thing he said was, I am neither Khomeini nor the Taliban. Leave me alone. Don't worry. I'm not going to take your rights away. And the Tunisian women continue to resist and call for their rights. و امیدوارم زنان مصری هم به همین روش ادامه بدن و اجازه ندهند که اونها رو حقوق مختصری که دارن اون حقوق رو هم از دستشون بگیرن. And I very much hope that Egyptian women are going to do likewise and that they're not going to allow. the very little rights that they have at the moment be taken away from them. و اینجاست که میگم زنان ایران با زنان کشورهای منطقه در ارتباط مستقیم هستن. از همین الان این ارتباط ها شروع شده و هشدارها رو به اون زنها میدن. And it is why, this is why the Iranian women have been in direct contact with women in the rest of the region and from now on they have been warning them about the consequences. و همچنین به زنان اردن. به زنان اردن و یمن. And also to the women in Jordan and in Yemen. من میدانم روزی آرامش و دموکراسی با دستان زنان به خاور میانه و ایران خواهد آمد و ما در انتظار آن فرخند روز هستیم I am, I am confident that democracy and peace will come to the Middle East including Iran with the hands of women and I am anxiously awaiting that auspicious day. Thank you. Thank
PlayStation. Thank you very much, Dr. Ribaldi, for this uh, fascinating talk. I'm sure there will be a, a lot of uh, questions. And uh, well, I also seized the opportunity of waiting for in these few minutes yes, to thank uh, Ms. Maria Musavi, the translator, for the remarkable translation done. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, we'll have 20 minutes of questions, followed by 10 minutes of reply by Dr. Ibadi. Uh, we ask you to remain seated until we leave the scene at the end of uh, the Q&A session, for obvious reasons. We, and. Uh, well, that won't take long anyway. Uh, please keep, where are the mics? Uh, we have two microphones on both uh, yes, ends of, of the room. So we urge you also to keep your questions brief. No statements, please, just questions. A lot of people, I'm sure, are willing to put questions here. So. I mean, the time is to be divided between all those who want. I'm sure we won't be able to take everybody, so at least make it possible to take the largest possible number of, of, of people by keeping your interventions quite, quite short. Secondly, while asking you to be brief, I have to ask you to speak slowly so that Dr. Ibadi can understand you and the... Uh, if you speak slowly, she won't be needing a translation. So we will also save some time. So keep it short, but slow. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, please. First question. Thank you very much. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, OK. Um, one question about your view on quotas for women. In Iraq, uh, there is now a quota, 25% quota for women enshrined in the Constitution. In practice, it means it's often the wives, daughters, and sisters of conservative male politicians who are actually uh, involved in politics. What is your view on quotas? And secondly, a quick question about the Iranian women's movement, because I fear that as much as we are very much um, in solidarity with Iranian feminists and we are very much respect their work, but uh, those of us who work in the region also see that sometimes we are our own worst enemies. And I was wondering if you can say a little bit about the divisions and tensions within the Iranian women's movement and how can we uh, overcome those in the Iranian context but also more widely in the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. The, 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 the lady there, yes, please. Hi, can you also please explain what do you mean by when you say democracy, because what model of democracy are we talking about? Are we talking about the Western model of democracy where, again, there are too many discriminations? And so what, what should be the model of democracy that we should be looking at? Thank you. Well, yes, please try to speak slowly. One, one question in the middle here. Yeah, uh, Ms. Ibadi, in your uh, comparative analysis and comparing different countries in the Middle East, uh, I believe you've been rather generous to Turkey because you uh, mentioned that Turkey is a little bit more democratic. Uh, within that, uh, are you suggesting that Turkey can or should join Europe uh, sooner rather than later? And within that, uh, the bigger question of Turkey 
but about human rights in Turkey, and especially the, the human rights of the Kurds. And for you, I'm sure you have uh, informed uh, enough information about Turkey's uh, attitude towards the Kurds. Leyla Zana, a permanent uh, Kurdish woman, put in prison for 12 years by speaking in Kurdish. Thank you. The, the lady there, please. You mentioned that uh, one of the factors for crisis in Middle East is the difference between Palestine and Israel. You failed to mention one is occupier and the other is occupied. I would like to know whether they have the same responsibility in causing tension or it is the act of oppression of Israel which causes this. Dr. Abadi, it's an honor. I have a quick question about the Nobel Women's Initiative, in which... Who's speaking? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said that it was yes, an honor uh, but, uh, and... Please which... wait until... Uh, I'm sorry, Andy I didn't realize. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the Nobel Women's Initiative has three strategies, that of convening, shaping the conversation, and spotlighting or promoting. How effective or achievable do you consider this, these strategies to be at a grassroots level for women in the Middle East? Thank you. The lady here, please. Is there anything, <coughs> sorry, is there anything the Iranian woman can do to make sure another religiously um, government doesn't come like the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, Ali, please. Person here. Yes. Uh, one last question, and you. It's an honor to be in your presence, and I thank the uh, organizers of this event. I'd just like to ask, in light of the oppressive system of the IRI government, the Iranian government, who have repeatedly refused to ratify a key women's rights international law, do you believe they deserve their seat at the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, in which they've been given? Thank you. You have been remarkably disciplined, so we, have, we are taking much more questions than what I expected, so we'll, we'll uh, uh, make it in, let's say, two rounds. So there will be a, a reply by Dr. Ibadi to this first set of questions and then a second round, and that will be it. وضعیت حقوقی زنان در ایران بسیار تبعیض‌آمیزه و ضمناً باید به شما بگم دولت ایران نتوانست وارد سازمان زنان شورای سازمان ملل بشه نرفت اون تو رای نیاورد رای نیاورد من عرض می‌کنم نه نرو شما رای نیاورد من حالا توضیح میدم شما سر بکنید there, there, uh, the situation about concerning women's rights in Iran is very discriminatory and unlike what you said, the I Iran is not, has not managed to gain a seat in the UN um, Organization for UN Council for Women. Is that what you said? Iran Iran دولت ایران خیلی دلش میخواست که عضو اینجا بشه و وضعیت هم طوری بود که حتما میشد برای اینکه از خو... از آسیا ده کشور میتونستن عضو بشن و ایران هم جز اون ده تا بود هیچ رقیب نداشت این در حقیقت بدون رقیب و بدون انتخابات خیلی راحت میتونست وارد این سازمان بشه Iran really wanted to be a member of that organization, and in fact, it didn't even have any rivals in uh, Asia, and it could have easily become a member. تنها راه حل این بود که یک یا چند کشور دیگه از آسیا کاندید بشن که کار به رایگیری بکشه. ببینیم ایران رای میاره یا رای نمیاره. 
So the only solution was to have one or several other countries from Asia standing as candidates so that they'd be voting to see if Iran would gain enough votes or not. مسائل سیاسی کشورها زیاد علاقه نداشتن که داوطلب بشن و از جهت سیاسی با ایران سرشاخ بشن. For some political reasons these other countries were reluctant to put their names forward and to start to pit themselves against Iran. خوشبختانه در آسیا یک کشوری بود کشور تیمور شرقی است که رئیس جمهورش برنده جایزه صلح نوبله و اون حاضر شد که عضو بشه داوطلب بشه و در رأیگیری ایران عقب موند و نتونست وارد این سازمان بشه But fortunately in Asia there is a little country called East Timor and the president of that country is a fellow Nobel laureate so he put his country's name forward and as a result Iran did not manage to gain enough votes. و شما میتونید این رو تو سایت سازمان ملل هم ببینید که اسامی رو اونجا نوشتن که چه کشورهای عضو اون هستن ایران نتونست ولی که متأسفانه عربستان سعودی وارد شد. You can see that on the site or website of the United Nations, Iran was unable to gain enough votes, although unfortunately Saudi Arabia did. لیلا زانا یکی از دوستای منه و من خیلی بهش احترام قائلم. وقتی هم که زندان بود براش خیلی کمپین کردم. لیلا زانا is one of my good friends and I campaigned for her very much when she was actually in prison. من وقتی که گفتم ترکیه از بقیه کشورها وضعیت دموکراسیش بهتره شما ترکیه رو با بذاریم مقایسه کنید با بحرین و یمن و امارات و عربستان خب البته بهتره When I said that the democratic situation in Turkey is relatively better, yes, put Turkey next to Bahrain, Yemen, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia and of course it's better. اما این دلیل نمیشه که حکومت ترکیه یه حکومت ایدئال باشه و در بسیاری از موارد مرتکب نقض حقوق بشر شده و میشه از جمله حقوق ترکا کورتا But that by no means um, means that Turkey has the ideal democratic government, and in many instances, it has it is guilty of breaching human rights, such as in the case, case of its Kurdish minority. موضوع صحبت امروز من علت بحران‌های خواهر میانه و نقش زنان در کاهش این بحران‌ها بود. در نتیجه من به اینکه راجع به اختلاف فلسطین و اسرائیل و اینکه کی تجاوز کرده و چرا تجاوز کرده و چیکار باید کرد اصلا صحبت نکردم برای موضوع صحبت من نیست حالا اگر دوست داشته باشین یه جلسه دیگه بیذاریم راجع به این مسئله صحبت میکنم The topic of my talk this evening was the reason for the crisis, the current crisis in the Middle East and the role played by women in alleviating these, this crisis, these crises. It wasn't really about the dispute between Israel and Palestine and who is the occupier and who is uh, being oppressed. But if you like, we could have another seminar on, that sub- on the subject and I could speak about that in detail. و اینکه آیا دموکراسی که در اروپا هست کامل ترین نوع که ممکنه به وجود بیاید و در اینجا هیچ نقض حقوق بشر نیست من هیچ وقت این اعتقاد رو ندارم و از حرفای منم چه این چیزی بر نمیاد As for democracy and whether the democracy they have in Europe is the most complete and comprehensive democracy in the whole world No I don't think so and I never um, I hope I did not give that kind of impression. مسلماً در اروپا هم نقض حقوق بشر وجود داره که همه شما بهش واقفید. There is no doubt that human rights are also violated in Europe and I'm sure you're all well aware of it. از جمله با وجودی که در اروپا زنان وضعیت حقوقی 
مشابه مردان دارند اما امکانات کمتری برای برخورداری از تساوی حقوق دارند For instance in Europe although in paper on paper women have the same more or less the same rights to men but they don't have the same they have fewer resources in enjoying and realizing those rights شما نگاه کنید به کابینه کشورهای اروپایی غیر از شمال اروپا تعداد زنانی که در کابینه هستند بسیار کمتر از مرد است Just look at the various cabinets around European countries. The number of women occupying ministerial seats, with the exception of perhaps Northern Europe, is far fewer than the number of men. ما نمیتونیم کاری بکنیم که اخبار مسلمی سر کار نیاد. مردم این وظیفه مردم مصر که چه اخبار مسلمی، چه هر گروه دیگه ای رو که سر کار بیان. براشون یه چارچوب بذارن و اجازه ندن به حقوق مردم تخطی کنن. It is there is nothing we can do to stop the Muslim brothers from taking over in Egypt that is the role of the Egyptian people and they have to whoever comes into power they must set up a framework and make sure that the likes of Muslim brothers do not go beyond that framework. شما فقط به عنوان نمایندگان جامعه مدنی با جامعه مدنی مصر میتونید در ارتباط باشید و به با اونها آگاهی و هشدار بدید. What you can do as representatives of civil society you could contact representatives of your counterparts in Egypt and warn them about the consequences. ولی دموکراسی در هر کشور وظیفه مردم همون کشوره. Otherwise Democracy and the realization of it in every country is the duty of the people of that country. بعد از اینکه من جایزه نوبل رو بردم در سال 2004 با سایر زنانی که جایزه نوبل سر رو برده بودن تماس گرفتم. After I won the Nobel Peace Prize a year later in 2004 I contacted other women who had also who were also Nobel laureates. ما هفت نفر بودیم که زنده بودیم و این جایزه رو برده بودیم چون بقیه مرده بودن. There were seven of us female Nobel laureates who were still alive the rest had died. و غیر از خانم آنسان سوشی که در حبس خانگی بود و ما نمیتونستیم بهش دسترسی پیدا کنیم با بقیه تماس گرفتیم و توافق کردیم همه که ما علاوه بر کارهایی که خودمون هر کدام داریم فعالیت های شخصی و حرفه خودمون یک انجیو زنان هم درست کنیم So with the exception of Aung San Suu Kyi who was under house arrest the rest of us decided to set up an NGO for women to do some work for women in addition to the work we were doing privately on our own. و بدین ترتیب Nobel Women's Initiative تأسیس شد دفتر مرکزی ما در اتاوا هست و هدف ما این است که زنان نوبلیست برای صلح دموکراسی و حقوق زن فعالیت می کنند. And that is how the Nobel Women's Initiative was set up. Our headquarters is in Ottawa and we try and promote peace, democracy and the rights of women. ما برنامه های زیادی اجرا کردیم ولی کن رأس همه برنامه ها مربوط می شد به برمه و آزادی خانم آنسان سوشی. We had many programs, but the program we gave the most priority to was to gain the release of, was on Burma and to gain the release of Aung San Suu Kyi from house arrest. از جمله در سال 2010 ما یک دادگاه سمبولیک در شهر نیویورک تشکیل دادیم و از تعدادی از قربانیان نقض حقوق بشر در برمه دعوت کردیم که بیان و سرگذشتشون رو بگن 
So in 2010, for instance, we set up a symbolic court in New York and we invited some of the victims of human rights violations in Burma to come and speak as witnesses. ملاقات های متعددی با شورای امنیت سازمان ملل متحد داشتیم. We had several meetings with the UN Security Council. و همچنین با نمایندگان دولت ها. And also with representatives of various governments. تا اینکه خوشبختانه خانم آنسان سوشی از حبس چند ماه قبل از حبس خانگی خارج شد هر چند که برمه هنوز به دموکراسی نرسیده until finally mrs aung san suu kyi was released from house arrest a few months ago although there is still no democracy in burma و ما زنان نوبلیست تصمیم گرفتیم که روز 14 ژانویه بریم برمه به دیدار همکارمون خانم آن سان سوشی هر کدام از ما در هر جای که بودیم رفتیم سفارت برمه درخواست ویزا کردیم ولی کم به هیچ کدام از ماها ویزا ندادن so we women laureates we decided to go and meet with Aung San Suu Kyi on 14th of January so we applied for visas in our in various countries but none of the embassies of Burma granted us visas یکی از فعالیت های نوبل ویمنز اینیشیتیو برای زنان ایرانه برای اینکه صدای زنان ایران رو به راحتتر به گوش مردم جهان برسونه One of the activities of the Nobel Women's Initiatives is to help the Iranian women and to make sure that their voices are heard outside the country فکر میکنم به سوال جواب دادم um, Thank you very much So we can take just a few more questions and Oh, okay, uh, in the second round, we'll start with uh, Nadia's question. Uh, please, uh, the, the person there. Um, Dr. Ebadi, thank you very much for your fascinating talk, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Um, you placed great emphasis on the importance of education for women. And I would like to have your view, please, and your advice on what um, about the system in Iran where Baha'i women are denied rights of higher education for no other reason than the mere fact that they are Baha'is, which is a religious minority. What can women, both in Iran, in the Middle East, and in the West do, which will be most effective in helping the cause of women in Iran who are Baha'is to have access to higher education. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Dr. Ebadi, thank you. It's a pleasure to hear you speak again. I I'm also a Baha'i, but I'm not actually going to ask a, a specific question about that as uh, this uh, dear lady has covered that. Twelve months ago today, there was a universal periodic review at the Human Rights Council of the whole of Iran's human rights record. My understanding is that Iran has not implemented any of the recommendations, many of which its government acceded to in Geneva 12 months ago. What would be your advice to governments, civil society, citizens around the world as to how to increase scrutiny intelligently on Iran's human rights situation and to monitor the abuses of Iranian citizens there? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe here, please. No, 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 no. Sorry, it's, it's behind you. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to ask if the religion can coexist with democracy, and what about is democracy? Does democracy must compare secularization? And then, what about the societies where actually religion gives rights to the woman and democracy takes them away? Thank you. Yeah, yes, uh, here, Ali, please, this person. Yes? خانم عبادی. نقش زمان رو در حرکت های اعتراضی که در منطقه رخ میده شما چه میبینید؟ یعنی چرا این اتفاقات الان میفته؟ 
و به نظر شما نتیجه ای که این حرکت های اعتراضی خواهد داشت چه نگرانی هایی رو برای حقوق بشر در منطقه رقم میزنه؟ مچکم اوکی Yeah, I'm s selecting. Uh, I wanted to say what uh, the significance of the timing is of the current crisis in the region and what the impact of these are on the human rights situation in, uh, in, the, in the region. And in Iran, did you say? No. And in Iran, of course, the region. Thank you. Well, one last question because we're running a person at the end. One second. Yes, I, I can't give it to everybody. I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Doctor, um, I just wanted to ask about the capacity of women in Yemen uh, to uh, be able to enjoy the freedoms that you're hoping that other women in the region will enjoy. Thank you. Yes, I mean, we're, we're running short of time. It is, a lot of people want to speak. A lot of hands are being raised from here to there. So, okay. So I take, okay, just two more, but you keep it very, very brief, please. And that will be the end. Uh, hello, Mrs. But I, want, uh, I am for two revelations in Iran. When 32, 32 years ago we did the revelation in Iran, the famous newspaper asked me, two time interview with me, what you want for this re re revelation? What you want for new revelation, new, new government? I said democracy for everybody, any religion. Now in Iran, women, Muslim, must be have hijab because they are Muslim. What about Jewish? What about Christian women in Iran, why must be they have hijab? And all law for Muslim women must be their respect. This is not democracy. Yes, please. Uh, just uh, one uh, second. It's OK? Can I? Yes, yes. It's, um, we have had the brutal spectacle of uh, hanging uh, Bahrami, Miss Bahrami, a beautiful woman with two small children in Iran. Uh, on charges which uh, seem to be very dubious uh, because she was after the um, demonstrations uh, uh, following the presidential so-called elections. Of course, she was put in prison and then they uh, accused her of somehow uh, smuggling drugs in prison. Now, I wonder what uh, has been done for this poor woman uh, in, by the women's organizations, because it really is absolutely drastic. And uh, uh, an example of brutality, which this regime, of course, uh, uh, when they, they say, uh, she probably kill all the infidels, she probably was amongst the infidels. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Apologies for those who wanted to speak, but this is the rule of the game. We are a big crowd here. Thank you very much. Jumbish feministi, yani, برابری خواهانه یعنی تقاضای برابری حقوق زن و مرد در یک جامعه و این یکی از حقوق اولیه انسان هاست The feminist movement is about wanting equal rights between men and women in a society and it is one of the fundamental rights of human beings اینکه چطور می شود به این حقوق برابر رسید طبیعتا عقاید ممکن مختلف باشه راه های گوناگونی رو هر کس بر حسب جامعه ای که هست پیشنهاد بکنه 
that equality? Well, naturally, there are differences of ideas, differences of ways, and people have various means of which, in which they think they can achieve that democracy in their various respective societies. But the aim remains one and the same, and that is to realize equal rights. در راهی که طی میشه ممکنه که یه گروه با یه گروه دیگه هم اختلاف داشته باشه یه چیز طبیعیه مگه تو مردا توی احساب این اختلاف ها پیش نمیاد so it's very it's very natural that in this process some may have differences with others does it not happen in various different political parties بنابراین این که اختلاف عقیده و سلیقه پیش بیاد به نظر من یه چیز طبیعیه و به اصل هدف هم صدمه نمیزنه. So in my opinion it's very natural that there should be differences of opinion and differences in style and but I don't think it changes the aim. Um, در مورد بهائی. Now regarding the Baha'is به موجب قانون اساسی دین رسمی شیعه است اما سایر فرق اسلامی و همچنین مسیحی یهودی و زرتشتی به رسمیت شناخته شدند. According to the Iranian constitution the state religion is Shiite Islam but other branches of Islam as well as Um, Christianity, Judaism, and Zoroastrianism have also been recognized by the Constitution. و حالا که پیروان ادیان دیگری هم در ایران هستند که یکی از این ادیان دین بهایی است. حدود 300 هزار بهایی در ایران زندگی می کنند. But there are also followers of other faiths and religions in Iran that are not recognized. recognized such as the Baha'i faith and there are some 300,000 Baha'is who currently live in Iran. متاسفانه بهایی ها در ایران هیچ حقی ندارند. حتی از ابتدای انقلاب به اینها اجازه داده نشده که در دانشگاه تحصیل کنند. Sadly these Baha'is have been deprived of all their rights and which includes education since the beginning of the revolution members of the Baha'i faith have been barred from entering universities. و در حال حاضر هم هفت نفر از رهبران بهائی ایران و هم به اضافه تعدادی بهائی دیگر در زندان هستند. And at present there are seven Baha'i leaders as well as several other Baha'is who are imprisoned in Iran. و تمامی تلاش ما مدافعان حقوق بشر در ایران برای اینکه حق شهروندی برای بهایی ها بگیریم متاسفانه به جایی نرسید. And unfortunately, despite all our efforts, efforts made by us, defenders of human rights in Iran, have to gain some civil rights for these Baha'is have been in vain. و باید بگم که متاسفانه وضعیت بهایی ها در سایر کشورهای خاور میانه هم خوب نیست. And unfortunately, I can say that the uh, plight of the Baha'is in the rest of the Middle East is not any better. And this is something that must change. Everyone's human rights must be observed. این که چطور می شود علا رقم گزارش های متعددی که برای نقض حقوق بشر در ایران صادر میشه وضعیت حقوق بشر و دولت ایران بی اعتراض به این قدنامه ها و گزارش ها چطور میشه وضعیت حقوق بشر رو بهتر کرد؟ Now as to what we can do to improve the human rights situation despite uh, all these reports that have been written about violation of human rights in Iran and the declarations and the resolutions that have been issued to that end what can we do? یکی از راه ها همون است که شما اشاره کردید یعنی یک گزارشگر دائمی برای حقوق بشر برای ایران تعیین کنند. One is something that you highlighted and that is that they should appoint a permanent rapporteur 
to look at the human rights to monitor the human rights situation in Iran. اما توجه داشته باشید که چه مقامی می تواند این گزارش کرد رو تعیین کند. But you have to bear in mind what uh, authority can actually be in a position to appoint such a special rapporteur. سازمان ملل که خود سازمان ملل تشکیل میشه از دولت ها یعنی در حقیقت بسیاری از دولت ها که وضعیت حقوق بشرشون هم از ایران بدتره حاضر نیستن که برای ایران راپورتور بذارن به همین دلیل ما چند سال تلاش کردیم موفق نشدیم You have to bear in mind that the United Nations is made up of other nations and there are many whose human rights situation is not any better than the human rights situation in Iran so have so they have not helped uh, in trying to appoint a special rapporteur for human rights to monitor human rights in Iran اما با توجه به اینکه وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران رو به وخامت میره و مخصوصا تعداد بالای اعدام ها و به ویژه اعدام های سیاسی بسیار محتمله که در سال 2011 گزارشگر برای ایران تعیین کنند. But in view of the fact that the human rights situation in Iran is deteriorating rapidly as demonstrated in the increasing number of executions including executions of political activists it is very probable that in 2011 they will appoint a special rapporteur to monitor the human rights situation in Iran. در مورد اینکه دین به زن حقوق بیشتری میدهد. Regarding whether religion gives greater rights to women. من هم مثل شما معتقدم که دین اسلام ضد زن نیست و حقوق زن رو رعایت میکنه. Like you, I do believe that Islamic religion is not an anti-women religion and it does respect the rights of women. اما چه کسی باید این دین رو اجرا بکنه؟ But who is enforcing the religion? اون کسی که اساساً به دموکراسی معتقد نیست و فکر میکنه هر کس مثل خودش فکر نکنه با اسی بکشنش؟ Is it enforced? Should it be enforced by a person who doesn't believe in democracy and thinks that anyone who acts and in other ways than he himself wishes to should be uh, um, should be put behind bars? بنابراین مسئله اساسا برمیگرده به دموکراسی. Therefore, we again go back to democracy. اسلام جهان اسلام بسیار گسترده است. The Islamic world is very expansive. وضعیت متفاوت زنان در کشورهای اسلامی نشون میده که چقدر تفسیرهای گوناگونی راجع به دین وجود داره. You just have to look at the different situations and circumstances of women throughout the Middle East to see how there are various interpretations of Islam with regards to women. بنوان مثال در کشوری مثل عربستان سعودی زنها نمی توانند حتی رانندگی کنند. For instance in a country such as Saudi Arabia women are not even allowed to drive cars. چه برسه به اینکه وارد فعالیت های سیاسی و اجتماعی بشن. Let alone participating in political and social activities. اما ما می بینیم در بعضی از کشورهای اسلامی مثل اندونزی بنگلادش، پاکستان زنها از سالها قبل توانستند به مشاغل بالایی مثل ریاست جمهوری و نخست وزیری هم برسند. On the other hand we see in Islamic countries such as Indonesia, Bangladesh and even Pakistan that women for years have been able to occupy senior positions including presidency or even prime minister. و این که میگم زنان ایران هشدار میدن به زنان منطقه یعنی همین که اجازه ندهید به نام اسلام به شما ستم بکنند. And that is what I mean when I say the Iranian women are warning other women in the region they're saying do not let them oppress you in the name of Islam. اگر اخوان المسلمین 
مردم مصر میخواهند اخوان المسلمی سر کار بیاید به خودشون مربوطه ولی کن نباید اخوان المسلمین استفاد سو استفاده بکنه از مذهب و حقوق زنان مصری رو بگیره If Muslim brothers want to come, want to, if the people of Egypt choose to have the Muslim brothers leading the country, that is their choice, and we cannot interfere. But they should not allow them to breach uh, um, human rights and the rights of women. And also bear in mind that Islam, like all other religions, have various interpretations. مثلا در اروپا یک کلیسا سخت جنین رو قبول نمیکنه یک کلیسا اون رو قبول میکنه For example in the west you get one church that is in favor of abortion and you get another one that condemns it یک کلیسا ازدواج همجنسگرایان رو قبول میکنه یک کلیسا قبول نمیکنه You get one church who agrees to civil partnership between homosexuals and you get another that doesn't اسلام هم همینطوره and it's the same in Islam موضوع سر دموکراسیه the issue is democracy باید ببینیم این کیه که داره اسلام اجرا میکنه we have to see who is actually in charge of enforcing the Islamic religion دشمن ما زنهای مسلمان حکومت های غیر دموکراتیک استبدادی است the enemy of us Muslim women or the undemocratic despotic governments. Why is it that in this time these disputes in the middle of the war And as to why, as to the timing of all these crises at the moment in the Middle East. Government of Iran is convinced that this was a result of the Islamic Revolution. The Iranian government believes it to be the consequence of the 1979 Islamic Revolution. So I'm so, where I'm surprised is why did it take 32 years? As on taraf. رهبران یعنی کسانی در جنبش سبز میگویند که این اثرات اعتراضی ما بوده. While on the other hand you get people in the green movement who are saying this is thanks to our protests. و مردم منطقه از ما یاد گرفتن. And that the people of the region have learned from us. اما من فکر می کنم اون چی که باعث شده منطقه مردم منطقه خواهان حقوق خودشون بشه در حقیقت تکنولوژیه But I think what I think the cause of what is happening that the people in the region want are striving for their rights is technology یعنی با تکنولوژی در همون لحظه هر اتفاقی که میفته بقیه مناطق هم این مسئله رو میبینن آگاه میشن الگو برداری میکنن in other words thanks to technology when something when an event happens in one part of the region in the rest of the region they can see what is happening and they could use it as model حتما میدانید که در مصر سرعت اینترنت ها رو پایین آوردن پیامک ها و موبایل ها رو در بسیاری از مناطق قطع کردن یعنی چی یعنی که مردم با تکنولوژی به هم دیگه وصل نشن ارتباط نگیرن As I'm sure you've heard in Egypt they have considerably slowed down the in speed of the internet they have blocked text messaging they have blocked people's mobile phones because they don't want people to have contact with one another این اتفاقی که در ایران افتاد در اوج جنبش سبز دیدیم که موبایل از کار افتاد و پارازیت های بسیار قوی برای تلویزیون های بی بی سی و ویسا و امریکا فرستادن یعنی چی؟ یعنی مردم میخواستن از تکنولوژی دور کنن This is exactly what happened in Iran at the height of the green movement's uh, 
Uh, protests, the Iranian government suddenly blocked all the mobile phones. They started jamming the satellite television network, such as the BBC and the Voice of America, because they do not want, they did not want people to be in touch with each other. و بذارید بگم که تکنولوژی خواب راحت رو از چشم دیکتاتورا گرفته. So I can tell you that thanks to technology dictators cannot have a good night sleep. در ایران هر هر زنی که در ایران باشه چه مسلمان باشه چه غیر مسلمان چه ایرانی باشه چه غیر ایرانی بایستی هجاب داشته باشه و اگر هجاب نداشته باشه مرتکب جرم شده و مجازات میشه In Iran every woman must observe the Islamic dress code the hijab be her um, be, she could be Muslim she could be Christian she could be any other religion and if she doesn't observe the hijab she will be imprisoned for it um, و حالا که هجاب برای غیر مسلمان ها ضروری نیست ولی که در ایران همه رو ضروری میکنن حتی وقتی که شما سوار هواپیما بشین اگر یه زنی هجاب نداشته باشه تو هوا خود هواپیما بهش اونجا تا پیاده میشه فرنگ یه روسری میدن زنش بکنه Uh, although non-Muslim women do not have to observe the hijab and wear a headscarf, yet in Iran uh, they are forced to do so. Even that is even extended to inside air, the aircraft. When they uh, go on an Iranian aircraft, they have to observe the hijab, and if they don't have a headscarf, they are given a headscarf to wear. Um, I'm very disappointed. برای ادام هایی که در ایران اتفاق میفته خصوصا اون هایی که اتهامشون سیاسی است I am very saddened to see all these executions that are taking place in Iran especially those who, who have been uh, political activists and prisoners um, یکی از اینا خانم زهرا بهرامی ایرانی هلندی بود که اعدام شد و متاسفانه جسدش را هم حتی به خانوادهش تحویل ندادند. One of those was Miss Zahra Bahrami who was an Iranian Dutch woman and she was executed and they have not even allowed her family uh, to have her body. یعنی در حقیقت متهمان سیاسی که اعدام میشوند دیگه جنازهشون رو تحویل خانواده نمیدن و دولت خودش اینا رو دفن میکنه. In fact all political prisoners who are executed their families are not allowed to take away their bodies and give them a burial because the Iranian government takes them and buries them itself. در اعتراض به اعدام های زیادی که در ایران صورت میگیره یک اعتراض اعتراض سراسری در 29 ژانویه در اکثر شهرهای اروپا صورت گرفت که زنها در این خصوص هم پیشگام بودند زنان ایران In protest against all these execution of political prisoners on 29th of Jan- January there were widespread protests uh, in, throughout most of Europe and again women played the leading part in these protests. And I'm sure you can see the footage of that in, uh, in YouTube. Um, in Yemen, uh, and as for the women in Yemen and their rights, whether or not they'll be able to have equal rights, why do you think that the women in Yemen شایستگی حقوق برابر رو ندارد Why would you think that women in Yemen would, should not merit equal rights? میزان زنان به میزان فعالیتی که برای به دست آوردن حقوق می کنند از حقوقشون برخوردار خواهند شد و جنبش های برابری خواهانه هم در یمن وجود داره 
women would realize their e will realize their equal rights depending on how much work they do to obtain these human rights. And there are women's feminist movements in Yemen as well. این بحران ها چه تأثیری در حقوق بشر این بحران هایی که ایجاد شده چه تأثیری در حقوق بشر داره What is the impact of these, the current crises on human rights مسلما پیروزی مردم یک گام به سوی بهبود حقوق بشره There is no doubt the victory of the people is a step towards human victory of human rights. اما مردمی که به پیروزی میرسند باید اون پیروزی را حفظ بکنند. But when people achieve victory, they must also try and maintain that victory. من همیشه گفتم دموکراسی مثل یک گله I've always said that democracy is like a flower. شما وقتی یه گلدان گل توی منزلتون دارید هر روز بعد آبش بدید نورش رو تنظیم کنید تا شاداب بمونه. When you have a plant pot in your home every day you have to make sure that it gets adequate light that it gets adequate water. و نمیتونید یه سطل آب بهش بدین و بگین به اندازه یک ماه این بهش آب دادم و برین دیگه تا یه ما باش کار نشته باشه خب این پژمرده میشه You can't just take a bucket of water and pour it into that plant and say that's it for a month I don't need to do anything بنابراین ملتی که به دموکراسی میرسه و دیکتاتور رو بیرون میکنه باید حواسش جمع باشه مراقبت هر همه روزه از دستاوردش بکنه اگه قرار بشه بره خونش بخوابه طبیعی است Therefore, a nation that ousts its dictator must try every day to maintain that achievement. If it just says, okay, the deed has been done and goes and sleeps every night, and uh, then that democracy will not remain. و بدین ترتیبه که میبینیم چرا بعضی از انقلابا به دیکتاتوری ختم میشه. یعنی مردم به معنی که پیروز شدن دیگه فکر کردن کار تمومه وظیفهشون این بود که بیان خیابون هوار بکشن یه دیکتاتور رو بیرون کنن بعد هم دیگه برن فراموش کنن خب این نمیشه which is precisely why you see that some revolutions end up with dictatorship because the moment the people manage to oust a dictator they think their job has been done they've gone to the streets and they've got rid of the dictator instead of trying to maintain what they have achieved. بنوان حسن ختام این جلسه بذارید تکرار کنم. دموکراسی مثل یک گله مراقبت همه روزه میخواد. از آنچه که به دست آوردید مراقبت کنید مبادا که از دست بدهید. As a last word, I repeat, democracy is like a flower. Make sure that you look after that flower, that you do not lose it. So hold on to democracy when you achieve it. Thank you very much.